Hello. <laughs> Hi, Jean. Hello, I am Noma Jamezrani, and I am one of the parents of a student at the Gateway School. Hello, my name is Eugene Somerville, and I am an alumni parent of <gasps> Bobby Somerville at the Gateway School. The Gateway School changed our life forever and gave us life to go on and be amazing in our, our family's lives and Bobby's life as a teenager. Yikes! Oh my goodness, <laughs> oh my goodness. This teen, yes, and my teenager, Quiva. Thank you, I should talk about my child as well because that's the whole point. It's not about me, it's about our children. Um, <laughs> flown, has flown. Um, it's interesting when she um, joined at 11 and we'd come from Britain over to New York for my work and then we found the Gateway School. And um, I didn't realise how hard it was for baby girl in terms of how she was seriously that kind of they're just coping they're just coping they're just making sure that no one's worried about them and they're just coping but it's actually quite stressful so every time a reading class is what her old teacher told me every time a reading class came in hands up to the toilet every time and you go okay there's a problem here but i didn't realize she really couldn't read and the gateway as someone says when your child finds the right school they bloom and within three months of arriving at the gateway school it was um okay, we've landed, we've landed, which is a good place to be. So yes, this teenager is now about to leave as well, as your Bobby has done. Isn't yes. that amazing? I know, it's really great. <laughs> He's uh, in ninth grade now at the Mary McDowell Friends School, which is amazing. But I always share with the Gateway faculty and the head of school that if it wasn't for Gateway, we wouldn't be where we are today. I mean, oh just everything that they do, the way that they create the curriculum for the children, they mm -hmm. make them feel welcomed. Uh, and the, the, the other amazing aspect of this is that if your child doesn't get it, the teacher finds a way for them to get way. it. How about that? Absolutely. They I mean, I've had some amazing moments with Quiva with a couple of teachers going, it's okay, I will take, we will we'll do this. We will do this. We'll do the class, we'll, especially online now. We should meet afterwards at three o'clock and we'll sit for half an hour and make sure we go through it because I know she can do it. And that's my biggest thing with Quiva is that we all know you can do it. Of you course. just need the tools and the teachers are willing to help you, which is absolutely, you're absolutely right. Yeah. That, and that's, of advocacy because that's the thing that's blown me away I don't know about you but growing up oh, a parent was hanging around while you were doing the homework just to make sure you did the homework and blah 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 and it's like that referencing and not quite basically Quiva's taken ownership and that's the one that's Correct. blown me away she literally comes in from school all right no I'm on homework do you need any help do you need anything no nothing do you, do you want a cup of tea yeah yeah please <laughs> that, that's that's what I can offer that's what I can offer which is fantastic yeah it's Which really great. great but that's self-advocacy it's brilliant mm. it's a big component um at the gateway school at um uh, mary mcdowell school as well but also like in the eighth grade at gateway they really start to to have that conversation with you to speak up for what you need but they do it throughout the school but you know yeah. when you're in eighth grade you're about to fly this off is the time. to high school. This is the time. So it's Absolutely. been really amazing. And it's a different kind of pressure because it is a pressure, but it's a weird kind of pressure. What I realized in Quiva's eighth grade, it's about, it's a pressure. Yes, we've had the pandemic, we've had lockdown, we've had online schooling. All those things have been a challenge for everybody. But what I've loved about the Gateway um, is on the Student Advisory Council and she missed um, a couple and I didn't realize because I wasn't looking at the emails. This is right. a bad parent. Um, no, but Not a bad parent. Didn't, didn't know I know. Okay. It, That's all. There's a, exactly. And there was like, but what was lovely, the teacher, Miss Coyle, was going, I just want her to understand that she's in this leadership position because her peers chose her to be there and that she can step into it. And when I said that to Cleve, I said, look, this is what Miss Gore thinks is possible with you. You have to turn up for those things. And it's my bad that I didn't push you to right. do that. And that was just wonderful to hear because I just saw her smile. She's like, oh, did, they, did she say that? I was like, yes, they believe in you the same way I do. And it's just beautiful. It's like, understand that you are loved. Totally. Your, your welfare, your care, your potential are loved. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I get that too. Like, I feel like the confidence, Bobby's confidence grew exponentially at Gateway. Yeah. When he came, that was at a deficit. So we definitely both. at a deficit. Yes, yeah. before before. And they really believe in the kids, and they really have an amazing relationship. You know, it's and really you've been a proper you you you're very much as a parent. You've been in the school, which is very wonderful yeah. to see. Yeah. And I think as a black parent as well, I don't know. I I say black because it's that's a, fine, a honey, British I'm, way I'm of thing. Yeah, that's it. fabulous. I always keep saying I'm not African American. That's what people have got to understand. Um, uh, and I think it's very uh, powerful that we are there as parents as well to say this is what's possible. This is what's possible yes. for our children. And we're both in the entertainment industry. And Correct. that's not easy. It's not easy trying to figure out how you're going to pay for those bills and those rents and stuff like that. But there's just something about seeing your child succeeding it makes it easy to try and figure it out. It really does. It yeah. really does. Um, I feel in private schools, in learning difference institutions, there aren't many of us yes. there. Uh, one Absolutely. is because it's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and is. Um, as I've been at Gateway, now at Mary McDowell, you know, my whole showbiz gig has turned to advocacy activism. Fabulous. For those families that don't have the wherewithal to put the pieces of the puzzle mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. to be able to get little Johnny what he yeah. needs if he don't discovered. even realize there's a route. They don't even know that there is a route. Yeah. That's what, that was my shock coming to New York. Like, what? This is possible? this is possible um education like this is possible okay yeah okay, let's it's try really make it work. important yeah, really it important. really is important and to let other i mean i really want to let other families know that the one two three of how to get to a school like this because quite frankly we all know and i'm going to say it mm -hmm. if students and and children who have learning differences don't get in the correct learning uh in environment statistics show that it's only a matter of time that they drop out of school yeah that they start slinging rocks on the street and the next step and stop is, if they're not being inspired yes, yes. absolutely and that they're next different stop routes, is but generally Island. your state penitentiary is your next stop so i feel it has become that important from what everything that I've learned at Gateway, what I'm mm -hmm. learning at Mary McDowell, to give back to other families. Absolutely. That's the key. Like, how do I, yeah. you know, help families get to a gateway? Yeah. What's I suppose the gateway that's why we're to here. a gateway? That's, oh, hello. <laughs> What's the gateway to a gateway? <laughs> to a gateway. And you're the gateway. I think right now we are the gateway. Right we this are moment. the gateway. And it is a way of saying there is an opportunity here to feel, um, yes it's a safe I, she felt she was safe that's what i felt there's within those first three months i went she's safe she knows how to navigate her space her awareness because that's what i say about blooming when the kids are blooming they feel safe oh, totally. like a flower that's watered and all that that analogy absolutely is that um so, yeah yeah so show business we're in so that show, business. Literally, i'm looking going i'm going Oh yeah, I wanted to talk to you about some questions. <laughs> so, so forgive us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about this. What did spark your dream of becoming an actor or a performer or a creative, as alongside just, the activism? I came out of my mother's stomach dancing. I think very shy as a kid, though very shy. Of the baby and three older brothers. So the time I was born, there were set, my brothers were like. 17, 18, and 19 when I was one. Yeah. You were Baba. Yeah. They adored so you. They had lived and I mean, you know, and they really took care of me. But yeah. I think, you know, in the home, music was always played. Soul train every Saturday morning. I remember that as if I'm 
five years old. I know it. I'm learning about Soul Train because oh, it's a very honey. American experience. What's what's the guy's name who presented it? Who's like a Don legend Cornelius, in his own life? Honey. That's Don it, Cornelius, honey. That's it, Cornelius. Amazing. He's everything. Amazing. If you, if you go on YouTube and watch, <laughs> oh, they're, they're brilliant. Amazing. But the dancers, you guys, yes, honey, we do that anymore. I want more of that. Yes. And Ellis Hazlip also, which was um, a show like back in the 70s and 60s, which brought on like the early um, uh, Ashford and Simpson, George Faison, yes. Common de la yes. um, wow. They have a movie out called um, Mr. Soul, the movie. Yes, it's the Quest uh, Love movie, isn't it? This is coming. I, I haven't seen it yet. Have oh, you? you have I can't to. Wait. You have to. It's like yeah, amazing. It so all fantastic. that was swirling in the home. Yes. So I think music, you know, was a part of me. Um, and then when we moved to the projects in Bed Stuy, I was yeah. uh, six years old. And then my next door neighbor knew how to dance. She was belonged to a dance school. I, she taught me all the steps in her mother's living room. And then I got to the school. The teacher put me in front. You know, my confidence was built even more. I started. Doing you were like, meant for that. Yeah. You were meant for that. And we did yeah. shows in our apartments in the projects. We put up a sheet. I'll never forget it. We put up a sheet and we put out our names in construction paper, honey. I will never forget <laughs> yeah. it. On the sheet. You, you know, spoke to the universe. You go, you will sheet. know. Yeah. And we did, I mean, it was interesting because we were we were sowing seeds. And to this day, oh, people, darling. you know, I go back to the projects and um people always ask, are you still dancing? Yes, oh, honey, I'm are. dancing, I'm singing, yes. I'm on television. You're I'm living. Music musical as a rocket. It's fabulous. So, know, do you know when you told me that you're a rocket? I was so shocked. I was so because it's like one of the most joyous things. We arrived in uh, New York um, the Christmas of 2017 because I've done rehearsals and work in 2018 um, on the theater gig. And oh, what was the we, theater gig? The what theater was the gig was. I love you for that. I'm trying to back it was uh, it was Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, and I got to play the grown up Hermione. Yeah, that's great, and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm now sitting with you right now. There's always a thread to all these things. But we went to see the Rockettes, we went to see the show, rather, um, uh, at, at the musical, what's it, yes, Radio City Radio Musical. City. Oh my God, just walking into that space was extraordinary. It's like, <laughs> fine, we're gonna finally do this. And she was only, her, her and her dad were only there for a week before they went back to London. So that was the big treat. Because oh, everyone yeah. said, you've got to go and see yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah, everyone and says like, that. And it is that dance from the 30s, the soldiers, the toy soldiers. That, that's oh, it. That's the magic. Oh my God. Apart from amazingness all around it. True. And when you said, I was like, shut up, Jean. Yeah. And out of, my mother passed away like about 18 years ago. Yeah. But out of all my Broadway shows, her and my next door neighbor coming to see me as a rockette was everything. Oh, like, like, it highlight. was great. But the, the idea is, is that dreams do come true. No matter where you come yeah. from, you know, True. it's possible. And we I can both speak to this because, yeah. And you too. are too. Absolutely. Yeah, because my, my so getting into theatre and performance, it wasn't, uh, um, it just, it feels as if it's, it's just there for me. And I said yes to the opportunities that came. So I am a, a refugee child. That's how I say it. It's, not my identity, but that's part of my history. Right. Um, and I'm, I think it's very important to say with the kids that you're dyslexic, but that's not your identity. You're this, but that's not your identity. Correct. So that's part of my history. And um, arrived from uh, various countries in Africa. My parents are South African, left um, South Africa because of apartheid and the secret police. My dad was a communist, blah, 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 right, blah. Right, right. It, when I write it uh, or hear about a game, my God, whose story is that? Oh my God, it's my family's story. Because right, right. it always sounds weird when it's somebody else's or put down in somewhere else. But arrived in England at the age of seven. And by at the age of 13, jump cut, jump cut, yeah, yeah. found this youth theatre. I found a youth theatre. Someone never said, would you like to come and join? There's a Sunday afternoon class. And it felt like I'd found my tribe. I wasn't great academically. I'm a voracious reader. I was reading from seven years old, but I was, it was all um, uh, the fantasy stuff, the yeah. um, Oscar Wilde fairy tales or the Grimm brothers yeah. fairy tales, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, all the different kind of parables of life. 
And then I found this group of people. So you kind of go, we don't know how the world is going to happen to us. What do we say yes to and yeah. what don't yeah, we say yeah, yes yeah. to? And then didn't get into drama school. So I thought it's not going to be happening for me. But then got amazing mentor. He's still my friend. He's I met him when he was 57. He's now 84. So you can tell wow. I was very young. I'm now in my um, early 50s. So we, yeah, just over 25 years we've known each other. And um, wow. I still call him up to this day going, I've got this job. I've got this audition. What do you think? Can we talk <laughs> about this? And that's what it is when you are around. Because we none of this we do on our own. Life is, oh we don't God. do life on our own. So that he was able to go, no, you can be an actor, but you don't have to go to drama school. And I worked my tush off in different, um, no, no paying jobs, fringe theatre, because it was art. It was art. That's of what it course, was. Of, of course, course, darling. While you're going, all right, quick, scrabble, and you get off stage and you've got no room, whatever. <laughs> it was glorious. <laughs> and I look back on it now romantically. I mean, it was hard work doing it at the top of a pub yeah. theatre somewhere or school um, tour, where, a, a, a educational tour when you're doing a show and taking it out and then you're waking up at five o'clock to drive to a school to be ready by seven o'clock set up so the kids arrive at eight o'clock and you ah. So I feel as if I paid my dues. So coming to New York was amazing. And what the plan wasn't to stay here, but because, and I will say this absolutely, because of Gateway, I have now, I am now making a choice to be in New York, to be in America because the investment in my child's ed education has outweighed anything that I oh, thought honey. was possible. Absolutely. It was amazing. My acting made it happen, which is amazing. And then you look at our kids going, yeah, that's, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, um, I like to, I like to think of it as celestial choreography. That's oh, what hello. I call it. Yes. Yeah, celestial, you can have divine it really timing, divine yeah. timing and is divine timing. Thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, celestial choreography, you divine it? timing. It's all good because I feel like, you know, you don't really know how you're going to navigate when you get the news that your child learns differently. You know, there's a plethora of emotions that hit yes. you and that you yes. have to suss out. Let's you be know. absolutely honest about that. It's not an easy thing because we're yeah. all based in what the norm is what the hell is that that's what we're all growing up in there exactly. is exactly it's, it's not yeah so yeah. i i feel so blessed and you do too i know because we've had these conversations when i would see you when you first got to the school and oh. i was like oh my gosh <laughs> and we started talking and at that time you were so I was, kind it was great but i was going yeah. to london and i was picking your brain and then that's when i right. found out that you i had saw you being interviewed by the amazing dear i love him so much frank delella from new york one oh, on that interview yes. and the days hey, i saw friend. you and i put it together and i thought oh my gosh this is amazing and her child goes to gateway too oh my god we're gonna do great things that's the together. that's exactly yes. what i thought in my head and, and then you've when always I spoke been an angel you, judine you've always been an angel that's what i felt like uh, every time and it's like it's literally that and it is celestial dance and divine time because we seem to bump sorry we seem to bump into each other in odd moments and i like okay hello wasn't expecting you here well i wanted to say this because uh you know i've been blessed to know a lot of people that we know in the world and show business yeah. and the reason why i know them is because i realized that in acting yeah it's reacting but you have to be able to be yourself and sometimes yeah. that gets a little convoluted however the great thing about this thing called show business and the great thing about this thing called gateway is that yeah. you're able to put the two together because they are doing it in a totally different way multi-sensory okay that means a plethora of things that come together yeah. that make the situation even better for each individual yeah. child yeah which yeah. they and really that's what do this that. Work that we do yes absolutely for real yeah. so as as actors like for bobby music and dance for him is everything and now yeah. he's really getting into voice acting Fantastic. and the basketball so all yeah. of that is really it makes sense yeah it makes and sense that's, to me. Do you know what? I love it. I love it because uh, when we first arrived, I didn't know sports. I'm, I'm not a sports girl. 
Um, and I remember those, uh, which uh, uh, extracurricular stuff would you like to do? And then I remember going, oh, Quiva, would you like to do some basketball? Oh, I'm not too sure, being so British, not too sure. And then she got to know her friends and she went, Mama, can I go on the basketball? Because her friends were there. She, right. She's found a love. It's not the police, not, it, it's a very social thing for her. Correct. She's not going to be a sports star and it's that's just okay. glorious. Absolutely. And that's what I love about that. That was that opportunity. There's so many different extracurricular things to do, but that was out of her comfort zone. And it was right. great because there were friends going for it. And like the same with Bobby Quiva, and I've said this to you, Quiva loves dancing so much. Thank goodness. And we yeah. do need that balance of creativity wherever yeah. we can get it. And the kids are They're very, very happy. And the kids are very like, I know for Bobby, uh, we used to do times tables by singing and rapping. Yeah. 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 You know, just, Brilliant. I mean, just the way that yeah. they can it's learn. Rhythm. It's rhythm. Yeah. It is. Exactly. It's singing and rhythm. Because Queeva's got her facility to, to learn a song after one day, I find it extraordinary. It's going to take me 10 years to go, oh, yeah, that's what the lyrics were. I remember the music, but I can't remember the lyrics. Right. But she'll remember the lyrics. I go, yeah. wow. Because that's what we're going to remember our kids. I think, of course, I'm being romantic, but I don't think I am. I think they're phenomenal because they are having to navigate the world and see the world. I almost think that this is their gift. They're here to see the world in a different way and show us different ways of looking at the world. I because totally what the norm agree. is, is as we found out in this last year, is what is the norm? No one knows what the norm is. So what's the potential of what's um, possible? And I'm so excited by that. You should I'm be, so and, and especially this school year with the pandemic. Like if there was, a, that was well, another school situation, honey, you would be, you'd be, right. you'd be a mess. Every parent would be a mess. I mean, it's just. It's, it's hard. It is hard on parents. It's hard and it's not, yeah. it's not organized correctly. You mm -hmm. understand? And I'm not putting. And everyone's the trying their best. I will say that everyone's trying their best. They are trying their best. Navigating unknowns, but you've also got different energies in charge of whatever you're supposed to be doing. That's what I, I totally agree. And I just yeah. feel grateful to be in a place, and I'm sure you feel grateful being at yeah. Gateway, where the get, my mother used to say, you got to know when the getting is good, when it's happening. Make that out. Make that out. It's happening. Yeah. So, yeah, it's happening. I mean, that's it why really I is. Mean, they well, she's happy. Me. That's the other thing. Yeah. She's happy. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, exactly. I'm now look. I'm just making sure in our little uh, speakers <laughs> corner. Yes, honey, that we're um, we're checking all the boxes, darling. We're checking all the boxes, darling. Oh, I'm going to say, so speak to an. Uh, this is a nice one. Um, speak to an early instance of rejection you experienced and how you overcame it to pursue other roles. Ooh, great. Let's see. Oh, yes. So I auditioned for a project. I don't quite remember for remember what it was for, but um, I went to the big open call. Then we got um, down to the callback and then like the second callback and yeah. um, I didn't get it. And I was really like, uh, you were so close. That's the problem. I was so close Always. and I thought, wow. Yeah. And my mother used to always say to me, something better is coming along. And I, you cannot even imagine at that moment, you know, two yeah. callbacks, you know, fluffing up, three pairs of shoes, sheet music, the sides, you know, a candy bar and Gatorade <laughs> in the back and just like stretching, and, you know, all of that, that goes along with that. Yes. The, I was able to get through it because my mother would always say something better is coming along. Well, Something better came along called hairspray for me. Oh my God. With not getting whatever that other job was, I didn't get. <gasps> As I, you know, looked back and I was yes. being interviewed for something, somebody asked basically the same question I, and I gave this answer. So that was how I got through it and kind of managed it in my brain yeah. when I found out I got hairspray. But what took me through that little into Sissel part where I was just like, you know, how did I not get it or whatever? Maybe something's come along was thinking that, you know, something better is coming along. Thank I mean, God. it's the attitude. You didn't go down. Yes. Cause yeah. yes, I've gone. And you down have that things. moment when they don't call your number and you pick up your bags and you leave the room. You know what I mean? 
I mean, I always had a great attitude, but I thought, okay, something better is coming along. Yeah, there, there has to be something because you believed in yourself as well. That's what that attitude is. You totally. Go, they should totally. have me. Why didn't they have me? And how about you? Got you? To go, oh my goodness, so many different various ones. Um, what I the one I have quite a few that pop up in mind. Um, not rejection exactly, but it's more about performance states, which is ah. a kind of sense of rejection so there are yeah. two i'm going to mention kind of try and keep it short um the first time so this the mentor that i spoke about tony the first time i ever worked with him it was to do um uh, a showcase there was about actors doing monologues and the audience was made up of um uh directors casting directors yes. agents other actors it's one of those things you get you had to be invited to get in and then you met tony who worked with you and then you go and do the show right and it was over two nights so first and foremost, getting through Tony and working with, this, with him on the script was amazing. It's a wonderful monologue from the Coloured Museum by George Ooh. C. Wolfe. I've never seen that production. I've never ever seen the production. I just got the book and I remember falling in love. Have you seen it? Have you seen I it? I haven't seen it, but LaChance, who is oh, amazing, yes. fabulous and great, did it. I know exactly. Stop it. Oh, I mean, those Keep monologues going. are extraordinary. Keep going. I, I, I love the piece. Keep going. Amazing. Well, the, the and they said the one I did was the girl who laid an egg, and it was her babies. She was going to have so many babies, and if yes. anyone ever hurts them, they're going to have to deal with me. And you realize there's a lot of stuff going on. But what I love about Tony says, get, make it funny at the beginning. Make find the humor in your storytelling, so that when it comes to the end, <gasps> the sorrow will be quite intense. Ooh. So, Judy, <laughs> that first night, I have to say, I opened my mouth, and then. What felt like 10 seconds later, I stopped speaking and people were standing up. I'd gone through the thing, I'd done it. I was like, I felt as if I was channeling. I was magnificent. <laughs> okay. I was magnificent. I thought, this is amazing. I am meant to be doing this job. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Okay, oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, thanks, great, great, great. Next night, oh God, basically, I died. It was the worst performance I have ever given. But so close to that first night is what threw my head. I didn't understand. And when I remembered and looked back on it post that moment, because it was there was no laughter. It's literally within the first few seconds of me starting, I was on the wrong angle. I was in the yeah, wrong yeah, yeah. energy. And I was like, <laughs> I, I can't catch them. I, what, what is it? And then I'm trying to chase it too hard because I'm yeah, too yeah. aware. Because yeah. that thing about the night before when I disappeared and the story came. I was too aware this time. I could feel people breathing. I feel people moving. It's like, oh my God, this is horrendous. And it was literally. Wow. At the end of it. And I was like, what on earth bleep, bleep, bleep mm -hmm. just happened? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was a learning curve in the sense that what I was trying to do is trying to replicate the night before. Right. I wasn't being in the same place. And that was a great conversation to have with Tony. I was in a great place. Um, because I wasn't trusting. I was open the first night right. and I thought I've got to, I've got to bottle that. Right. But I wasn't open the second night. I was trying to construct it and trying to be in control of it. So I've, that's, that's been a lesson that's carried me through my acting work that be prepared to make mistakes, be prepared to fail. Cause that's what rehearsal and process is about to get through, but be present. You don't be doing last night's show. Don't be doing next week's show. There is none of that exists around this moment. And there have been other bumpy places in there, but that's the very first major learning. It's, it's, it, um, that that really is. They always like the first night is amazing, and then one always wants that second show of the after opening or whatever. You know, just really yeah. kind of, you know, yeah. be in the moment. And that's I now difficult. use it as an exercise. Yeah, I now use it ever since that. I now use it again. Right, we had the adrenaline, we had the energy, everyone's that from that very first one. Now mark it, now pace it. Let's just be. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because yes. I've seen car crashes from people <laughs> when they're not being. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I know what a car crash is. I yeah. too know what a car crash is. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, not rejection. I mean, have I had rejection? Yes, I've had rejection. A great rejection um, was. Uh, going up for the Royal Shakespeare Company for the very first time and Ooh. having the feeling that I'd got it and then being told, no, I hadn't got it. I was devastated. 
wow. devastated. And I can understand, but as young youth, you get it into your head, but oh, yeah. it's going to be you, blah, blah. Yeah. And then I get a phone call three months later from the director of the show that went up where he says, I didn't give you that role because I knew I had this one coming up. Look at that. Look at that. Look at God. That's Look what I always the, say. Look at celestial God, Celestial dance. Absolutely. But that's in that case, something better is coming for you. And I really did believe that. And it is the Maya Angelou thing. I was just watching her recently in the Oprah. I don't know. That's what I, I know. I go, I just need to touch in the world when I do an Oprah interview in the soul. No, Sunday, it's, soul it's Sunday. important. But with Miss um, Angelou, it was like, yeah, understand. It's like you, what your mom's saying, something better. Yeah. It hurts. It's painful but it's not what you're meant to be doing. And I do yeah. believe that thing, what is for you, won't let you by. Oh, a friend of mine said, what is for you is for you. If Beyonce is here, mm -hmm. if Avril Lavigne is here, mm -hmm. if JLo is there and I'm supposed to get the gig, I'm going to get the gig. You're going to get the gig. It takes yeah. time to get to that point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's, you, know, you don't pop out there. It's just saying that you have to believe yeah. in your ability to deliver. And I just saw just yesterday, yeah. the most yeah. amazing round table that took place two years ago on the Hollywood Reporter with Hugh I love Jackman. those ones, which one? Oh, yes. Hugh Jackman, um, Chasman, um, Bozeman, Bozeman, um, Chadwick, yeah. Uh, Marsh, Marsha Halla, Yes, Mahershala. Mahershala. Okay, I know exactly what I'm going to go and Google. So what was it? Oh was my it, God, it, it was amazing. It, it was basically them sharing how they get ready for a part. And, yeah. you know, when you're creating the character and when you're on set and, you know, how do you view the first three takes and you're conversating with the director, I gave you the, I mean, Yes. It was a masterclass. Okay, I need that for today. That's in, great. <laughs> in, in how, in, 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 in dealing with a new project, how do you go in and how do you yeah. make the best of it and admitting that you're afraid and Every you don't time. know and... You know, it was yeah. it was great to hear them. And that's the power, isn't it? That's what I've learned from that great is the people power. I've worked with. You, you don't know. You don't have the answers. It's okay not to have the answers. I'm definitely going to be doing that. Absolutely. Thank oh, it was brilliant. That it, yeah, it, it's, that's it, brilliant. It's a it's a reminder that everyone's what, new. It's always first day of class. Every, especially in our job, I, I think. I think in the, in the great world, every time we go into a new environment, a new situation the little kid in you however old you are goes oh okay here we go again yeah. I, it's, it's very rare that someone comes in and goes hey guys you yeah I, mean? I think we all go Hi. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah it's great it's, 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 it's good and it's yeah. okay not to be okay which was a big takeaway from that and they yeah and those guys are huge stars Absolutely. And they're giving you the 411. Yeah. You know, when I get the script, I thought the script was amazing. Yeah. And then when I got on set and I worked with, you know, my partner and I got together, you know, nine months before we, sh we, we shot the piece. Wow. And we were just talking about, you know, life and things like that. So then when we got on set, we had you life. Yeah. We were ready, ready. And I was like, yeah. yes. So it was good. It was really great. Was really I, and great. I think there is something about this constant learning. I do think what. I like curiosity. I like feeling that I'm a curious person. I like being curious about things. Sometimes I'm not curious about things because I go, I, no, nah, I'm just no not connection. vibrating. Yeah, no yeah, connection, yeah, yeah. exactly. And we have to yeah. trust our connections. Um, and I think every time you do go into uh, a new space, like this is what I feel like at this early 50s now, I'd say late 40s or 50s, is this is where my world is now going, no more, you are a successful-ish actor. And I kind of go, but what does that mean in the big scheme? Am I successful creatively? Okay, I don't okay. Know what Can I stop you for I'm a second? Because I'm still going, yeah. Successful-ish? Well, in whose, in whose terms? I think that's what ah. I'm fascinated by. That's what I'm fascinated right. because, I okay. mean, me, the actor still goes, I want to do, there are things I want to experience and do. But I do know that there is a success level there. And thank goodness for Harry Potter. And thank goodness for the Undoing. And thank goodness that for New York, that I can have those experiences. Honey, you have had those experiences. I remember seeing you 
Well, first of all, I didn't know you were on The Undoing, okay? And we just happened to flip channels and there you were. <laughs> and then when Bobby saw it, he was like, oh my God, that's Quiva's mom. And I thought, <laughs> this is great. This is fabulous. And then when I saw you in with the work, it was brilliant. Thank you know you. what I mean? Thank you. And I just, it's great to be- That makes me happy. What, honey, it's not only me, honey, a couple yeah. of other people have thought, a couple <laughs> of other people. Because it is the work, ultimately, yes. That's in, what we all do. Yeah. In high and amazing places have thought, thought that you did great. And the thing is, is that what my takeaway was, was that yeah. when I saw you on Columbus Avenue and I could have screamed to the, <laughs> I could have screamed to the rooftops because so ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen it, you should tune in. You should binge watch it because it. the story and how oh, well it is, is ridiculous. And then you have it some is. players it's... like uh, Nicole Kidman, Donald Sutherland, you and know. The um, and Hugh Grant. I call them the, the, the two Just Ferraris a... and the Maserati. Yeah, they're, yes. they're amazing. And you're right, they're amazing. you're right there with the Porsche, honey. You're right there with the Porsche. I know, darling. Thank yes, you. I honey. Kind of feel myself like a solid Volvo. Yes, I mean? I'm happy hey. in this. It's all right. <laughs> exactly. I'm going gang. Like Queen that. Okay. So thank you. You were gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the truth. It's, I mean, it's, but it's the work. I mean, to me, people say, yeah. "What is success?" To me, success is for myself, in my humble opinion, yeah, is that. me yeah. being. How would I put it? satisfied with what I have done to get the gig yes. and then the work that it takes yes. to create the character yes. and how it's moving the world along. That is the process. Of, it's the process. The process is and it? the undoing. Yes the messages that you take there were life lessons in that oh i love you for that you there were meta life, honey this. you were me meta fabulous there were life lessons in that honey now if you can get that then you need you need to just kind of rethink a couple of things okay we're gonna you know, have to talk about that off. yeah absolutely oh my god the there's whole children thing. involved and that's why there's... for me it was a lot it. so they you absolutely know, slammed it yeah i love art that takes us that it can do that that you're thinking wow and can we talk about how much art has been needed in this time this lockdown time i mean i've got a big thing with um i uh the arts theater closing down um the arts the arts and i'm thinking about britain i'm now here in britain getting ready to film um uh for the little mermaid which is fantastic and i'm, I'm gee i'm in quarantine so this is a nice moment to be in but it's it's interesting watching from america and watching Britain because the arts ironically are not as valued as well as I thought by the powers that be but the arts are everything nobody yeah. could have survived without the arts in all its different forms music painting dance visuals um storytelling in yeah. this time we've all needed the soul we've all needed the sucker and comfort do you know what I mean it's totally. like we are so, and so that's, and then going back to the gateway, I just think I, I look at our kids and I go, they, they look at the world in a different way and they totally. are in an artistic thread of visualizing and telling stories of the world. They're so important in that they see it in different ways so that we can not take things for granted. Totally. That's what it feels like. And yeah. I feel like they stand tall in who they are, which is what you want your child to, you know, be yeah. in the world anyway whether there's a learning yeah. difference or not to yeah. be able to stand tall on who they are. And I feel like Gateway really, really prepares your child to be the best that he can be without yeah. comparison to others. Absolutely. Child and Gateway needs something different. Yeah. Cause they already know that they're different. They already yeah. know society's already told them that you are different. Yeah. And then you come into an environment guys, but you're not on your own. You're Correct. not on your own. And this is what is possible. And that's what's joyous. Yeah. Yeah. So success yeah, um, at Gateway for our students are is just amazing. And you see the fruit. Like, I mean, it's really when Bobby and have conversation and I have conversations, which is usually yeah. in the kitchen 
because he likes to cook. So um, fabulous, well done. We'll have we'll start talking, and he's like, you know, when I was in Gateway, you know, I remember There's the best so conversations. So. Yes, cooking. yeah, which yeah. is really great. Yeah. I mean, all of his teachers, he really, really uh, enjoyed. Yeah. But I think Dr. Harrison, he enjoyed yeah. the most. In and is that brilliant that that was there? You know we I don't mean? have Not that as a most, thing in Britain. But I feel like yeah. I feel like he was able to really navigate a Connect. lot for Bobby. But the team, yeah. all of those teachers, you know, Miss Seidel, yeah. Miss Seidel, yeah. Miss. You know, but I think for me, Dr. Yeah. Harrison, just knowing that there is a counselor there that kids can go to, which is yes. an environment that I'm not used to, mm -hmm. coming from Britain and the schools mm -hmm. that we've been to before. You go, oh my God, that makes absolute sense. It makes absolute sense. There is somebody, apart from the teachers, apart from the parents, that the kids can go and say, this is how I'm feeling, I'm upset. And he was he navigated it brilliantly. Um, yeah. And I know Quiva always felt very, feels very comfortable that there is an option. Oh that, yeah. That Dr. Harrison is there. And he's, and, he, yeah, he's really, I mean, the kids really like him and they really take to yeah. him. So that's good. They do. Yeah, that's good. This is brilliant. Thank you, gorgeousness. Have we left anything out? I don't think we have. I don't think we have. Oh, what um, advice would we give an aspiring actor? Yes, the advice you would oh, give to someone. Oh, to overcome rejection. What advice? I the advice I, especially because things have changed. I really do believe there is a, a pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, um, pre-Black Lives Matter, post-Black Lives Matter. Things have shifted, and I remember doing a, a, a talk with young actors uh, early on in the pandemic. And one, one young actress said, so how, how do I play the game now? Because everything's it is closed. I don't know who, what. Mm -hmm. I said, stop right there. What is the game? What right. is the game? What is this construct that we've all been told? Because I, I, I totally agree with you that there was a construct of the game. There's a way to navigate. I don't think I believed in it in that way, but that, I always felt that there was a way of doing things. But now that's all thrown out out of the window because totally. I would say to young actors performers creators mm -hmm. I need you to dream of what is possible for your future I need you to dream of what kind of stories you like kind of what kind of telling you like what visual you like why don't you put those out in the world get those ready in this this moment in time the great reset whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. so that you have ideas of possibilities because what we had before was that that was a route that was a that was a route and if you didn't feel that you could get down that route you felt which i have done like well then i'm not worth it because i i can't seem to fit into the constructs that have been laid out for me correct but actually the construct that's out the window because they are constructs correct and it's someone else's construct those so therefore why don't you build you build it and let it come let it happen be part of dreaming what's possible that's how resilience is for me that's and I, I realized when i look back on my work i've always believed that i could do this job right i just didn't know how it was going to happen which is yeah. different yeah and i feel i feel the same way too i feel like you need to be the change you want to see in the world yes, so absolutely. this is a reset Absolutely. I remember a year ago when this happened, I was teaching a workshop and I yeah. went in and taught the workshop and I came out and Broadway had closed. But the night before the NBA closed. So when the yes, NBA yes. closed, I knew, OK, we're done. But well, you see, that's interesting because I'm not a sports person. So I was like, mm. yeah, no, NBA, whatever, that would be fine. For me, when Broadway closed, I remember it was like, it was like it's, it's, it'll be this time next week yeah. when it all happened. Totally, the thirteenth. Like, I'll never forget it. Yes, yes, this yeah. is real. Oh, we're so, in trouble. Yeah, and, yeah. And I think a lot of people, you know, actors, creators, performers, sometimes um, find themselves in insecure moments. You know what I mean? Like you get the part, and yeah. you're like, "Oh my god, did I get it? So how am I going to yes. do it?" You know, well, yeah, exactly. You've you went pushing. to three yes, callbacks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you went to, you went to. Oh, now I've got set, it. I mean, oh, no. you've done it all. You went to set. You, 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 you've done it. They really want you, but I feel like, you know, there's insecurities within all of us. Okay, and they yeah. leap out, 
in these moments when you book the job and you're like, oh, how am I going to do it? My oh, thing is yes. exactly what you said is to dream big. I think you yeah. should be this be the change that you want to see in the world. Yeah. So yeah. start writing your own stories. Stop waiting for the casting director or the Absolutely. agent to call you. Yeah. I've always yeah. worked on my own. I always have. So well done. Now in this moment, I know that I've tried to fit into the system before. The system, we all did, and that didn't serve. That absolutely did not serve me. And the more I became more authentic, and going, actually, no, I'm not going to choose that. And people go, why? That's great. And I went, no, it doesn't feel right for me. It doesn't resonate with me. So yeah. why am I in there? It's only just taking a check. And the couple of times I've taken a check for a job, it's been the most painful thing. Yes, That's the what truth. the Lord has taught me. That's oh my God, yeah. it's the truth. So write and create, absolutely. Write Dream and create big. the stories that you want to hear, that you want people to learn because yeah. in this reckoning that we have had this summer, mm -mm, okay, mm -mm. It, out of that came some really painful moments, but it absolutely. had to happen like that because yeah. if you don't live authentically, Okay. Oh, this that's is what is, if you don't live authentically, nothing matters. The money, yeah. the status, the house, nothing. And if it has taught anybody anything, COVID has really unveiled the curtain yes. Yes. as yes. to the have and have nots as it yes. comes to your health, which is yes. everything. Because you can't sing and dance if you're sick. You Absolutely. Cannot. Yeah. And you can't and how take authentic care of your other. Are you being in that? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so. You know, the arts, this is really giving you a time to write that book, write that monologue, yeah. write that screenplay, you know. Write that possibility, write yeah. that possibility. Put and it believe in it. Yeah. Don't wait for the yeah. approval of the agent, the yeah. casting director. Don't wait for people to go, oh my God, this is great. Yeah. You have That's the learning. That's the learning. I absolutely say that to young actors. Who are you needing to be validated by? And why are you needing to, them to validate you? Because that was a big learning curve. It's like, oh, I don't need the validation. And I've only learned that very recently. I real, I didn't realize how much it was a, a part of my core. It's like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. I need to step that thing away. Because yeah. now let's just get on with me and let's get on with my creativity. And that's when it started shifting. That's boom, started boom, shifting. boom. And yeah. Billy Porter, who is a friend. God bless him. Love oh. him. He said, he said on an, an interview with Tamron Hall, yes. when I started being authentic is when I started making money. When I was not living my true self true. and yeah. when I was unemployed was when I wasn't doing anything. But the minute I said, this is me, the coins came in, the jobs came yeah. in. So. And it's like the yeah. universe, spirit, whatever you believe in goes, thank you. Now, and also, I feel, yeah. also, I feel like you have to um, sometimes in speaking to young people, I feel like you have to say in the room, give yourself permission to be amazing because you are. Yes. Yes. Give yourself yes. permission yes. to be fabulous because you are. And realize oh. the people that you admire in whatever mm -hmm. business you're in. They yeah. started oh. when no one yeah. knew who they were. With that, but give yourself permission to also fail because that's what process is. That so when is you fail, a... fail better, fail up. Yes, absolutely. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've Thank covered you, my it. darling. I think we've covered it. It was fabulous. Enjoy Yay, your day. Yay, gateway. <laughs>